This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Welcome to another edition of Silent Voices, the only program in America that you, the viewer, can voice your opinion on the child welfare system. Today we have a very special guest that Maria sat down to and interview, and his name is John Stedman, and he is running as a Republican in the sheriff's primary for Kent County. And he has quite a different view on the system and how he would like to see it operated to save us some tax dollars and to, uh, uh, get the kids more involved with the community, the police and the sheriff's department involved with the community where these children uh, are no longer afraid of the police or run from them. So uh, let's go to that interview right now. Today we want to welcome John Stedman. John is here. He is running for sheriff um, in Kent County. And John, can you tell me a little bit about what you would like to accomplish running for sheriff? Well, I'd like to have a positive engagement with the community and bring unity in to the community. Uh, the current uh, establishment, uh, the only time that we see the sheriff is when he's running for office. Um, He's very proud of the uh, jail being the largest in Michigan. And I would like to work at changing the revolving door. Most of our 20 year olds and up are being the ones that are housed out there the most. And we need to put some good positive programs together. Right. So. Now, I understand that you're really involved in the community. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do and um, how you can balance that out to where you're more in contact and in tune with the people? Well, I do uh, four to five uh, studies early in the morning uh, to get my spiritual needs fed. And I also work with uh, two uh, groups that are uh, dealing with returning citizens, studying them learning how uh, they think and, and uh, I just think with my people skills I can bring some positive changes to them. I think that would be, I, I know there's a lot of groups in Grand Rapids and in King County that are really community based and there's people really trying to get, you know, to work on that. Now, do you have a lot of contact with the groups in Grand Rapids that are working on uniting citizens? Yes, um, there's uh, one program that I'm really uh, fascinated with. It's called uh, CLEAR. And these are gentlemen that are returning citizens. And they are <clears throat> uh, giving them the tools and everything else uh, uh, so that they can come back into the society and be a little more productive. Um, but I'm gonna actually try to do programs so that they don't make those poor choices, be more active in the community than any other sheriff has ever been. And I wanna bring an approach as a peace officer instead of a lockup uh, right. mentality. So that's kinda like after incarceration, it helps them get back into the Yes, and, uh, but I also want to work with the youth before they even get to that stage. Uh, I think well, um, leaving our children behind, uh, a lot of children uh, come from broken up families, have no father in the household, uh, a lot of them have never experienced love. Yeah. 
So. That sounds wonderful. That sounds like what this community needs. Um, is there anything specific that if you could change anything about the county, what do you think would benefit the people the most and would help us to be able to understand each other as far as in the sheriff position? Well, we got to uphold the laws that are in place in that, but I could be an advocate of the community of changing certain laws and actually having certain laws removed probably from the books. Um, we're not the legislator, but we are the voice of the people. Uh, for the people, by the people. And that's the way I will lead my leadership. That sounds great, John. Thank you. Um, now, I personally am involved in domestic violence and advocating for um, educating others. Is there any programs or anything that you have in mind that we could change in that regard as far as enforcing the laws and that type of thing? Um, to be honest with you, Annette, I have to get in there and take a full snapshot of the whole operation before I could really answer that uh, honestly. Mm -hmm. And to us here at Silent Voices, the children are very important. Um, how do you think you would be a better sheriff as far as helping with parental rights, with, um, with parenting in general? <clears throat> well, because most of these children that we're talking about are um, come from a uh, broken parent home. Uh, they need to have somebody that's going to understand where they're coming from mm -hmm. uh, and not just making uh, uh, judgment calls that, oh, we better call in CPS and that this is uh, something for them to handle. Um, we're using a system now that can just make accusations and not proven facts. We need to work with more proven facts than uh, just an accusation. Right. It's been discussed between Dennis and myself that we would like to see if, if children are taken from a home that there's some type of criminal conviction for abuse or neglect. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, <clears throat> uh, there's been cases that I've seen that, you know, uh, children can uh, be very disturbed in what they say is not really the, the gospel um, on either or uh, side. Yeah, unfortunately that does happen um, quite a bit. With well, yeah, they're going through a lot of trauma and uh, we really don't know where their mindset is. Um, you know, I come from a time frame in that where the fathers had a hard time sharing love. Mm -hmm. saying that they loved their children. And uh, I know myself as a, as a child, I wanted to be loved. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, my, my father uh, came from a fatherless home, and he, he had a hard time with those skills. But uh, actually, the night before he passed away, he come in the filing room and Aunt gave me a big hug and told me he loved me verbally for the first time, which changed my life in its entirety. Um, and it meant so much to me and it will always be dear to my heart. Right. So it sounds to me what you kind of are saying is that we, that there could be some intervention before the issues come to a head with children and with society and that type of thing. Yeah, we, we uh, as, as law enforcement and that, we could assess uh, uh, the call to where uh, we should lean on all the different nonprofit organizations out here in our community, which are very much willing to step up to the plate and help and get people through the chaos in the, in the system. Uh, but they need to be told what there is available to them. Um, right. None of us have advertising dollars like corporate America and they had just uh, 
<laughs> yeah, you know, so. that's for sure. So, John, just out of curiosity, what do you think about the interaction that has been taking place with our police department and the officers right now? There's kind of a temperature in the country. How do you think we can better that system? How do you think we can change the relations that are going on between citizens and officers right now? Well, we're going to have to uh, do some uh, different type training for the officers. Um, uh, they're, not, um, they're not doctors, they're, they're not shrinks. Um, they, uh, they gotta go with what's going on at the scene and sometimes it's really chaotic, but they need to be trained a little bit better to uh, each situation is, is different and it's not just jump on the phone and they better call CPS in. Yeah. Um, because CPS is not, in my opinion, they're, they're trying to do a good job, but they're a little bit distance from what's really happening in that. If they did not have it happen in their life or have it in uh, one of their family life, uh, they really don't know how to react. Well, I personally believe that CPS is an organization that if they were going to be successful, it would also have to be with more education, like you said. Um, that's huge. So what, what do you feel personally about um, police officers getting out into the community and meeting people outside of a, um, outside of a authoritative position? Oh, I, I, I would want to see more of that because uh, when I was coming up as a kid, I had a lot of officers that I looked up to. Today, even when I'm driving, and I watch myself very well, I feel, um, but when uh, it's so funny how the red, white, and blue means freedom mm -hmm. until, they, until they are behind you. Uh, even myself, uh, what did I do wrong? You know, is my freedom going to be violated? You know, so um, I w it's it's just trying to uh, change the curbside manner as to how we greet people when we go up t on the door to them. Right. So I, I understand taxes is a part of your. Of, of what you would like to touch on as far as sheriff goes. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, as a Wyoming resident, 30% uh, of my property taxes go to the jail. And, the, and our jail in Kent County is the number one in the state of Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, we housed uh, over 25,000 inmates last year and I would like to try to figure out a way to reduce that before they get there. Right. It's going to be a lot of community involvement. Uh, I think uh, with me being a sheriff and having uh, town hall meetings, uh, inviting the youth while they're young and showing them that we're not people to be afraid of. Right. And as it is now, and it, 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 uh, when they watch TV and everything else, they see all the violence both ways, uh, our youth are getting scared. And right. we, we have to do something to address that. Now, I've known you, John, for quite a few years, and um, so I know a little bit what your views are and that type of thing. I think in theory it's a wonderful idea, but my question I guess I would have to ask you is that having the meetings and and that type of thing, getting the public together with law enforcement, I think that's great ideas. But how do you how do you think you'll be able to better engage the youth and make them want to come to these meetings so that we can build relations up there? Well, I notice in most of the groups, if we feed them well, they come. <laughs> um, but have activities and stuff like that for the for the youth, so when they came to an event that it was more fun and pleasurable 
then um, then we could get our message out uh, through a uh, kind of a fun event, and right? S instead of scaring them half to death. And that I agree with. I know there's a lot of, um, like you said earlier, a lot of breakdown between trust, and I think that's a that's a good start to build it back up. You know, between the community and law enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, I think that really, you know, I, I agree with most of what you believe, and I, I think it's a great plan. And I really hope, you know, we at Silent Voices hope that you do great this election. We appreciate you being here. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add as far as what you'd like the people to know about you? Well, this is my uh, third time running. Um, I have self-funded uh, myself in um, each run. Um, I'm a person of the community all my life here, and I cannot continue to see the chaos go spiraling out of control without stepping up to the plate to try to do something. And I can't promise anyone out here anything. I am just a human, just like every one of us in that, but I will serve with love, and that's what we're missing in this country. I, I agree 100 percent, John. I definitely. <laughs> I love know. that word, love, love. <laughs> I, you know, myself personally, and it uh, come June 26, I'll be celebrating 40 years with my sweetheart uh, mm -hmm. from high school, um, and uh, we're still together today. And and it's been actually from being involved in the community, I've learned so much from one another that I want to be able to apply those skills to everybody's needs. Right. Definitely. And I agree. I think there's there's some God missing in this world and there's definitely some love missing in this world and that would be awesome. Um, I really, I've known John, like I said, for quite a long time and I think that it would serve us all well to get out and, and get out the vote. Um, let's get somebody in office that who actually cares about the people and who will get in there and implement change and that is what we need. Thank you, John, for being here today. Thank you. If you would like to be a guest on Silent Voices, contact us at contact at silentvoices.co. That's contact at silentvoices.co. I certainly want to thank John Stedman for coming on. Uh, let's go to a uh, segment from Legally Kidnapped. Good evening. Once upon a time there was an evil wizard who was on the verge of preforming his greatest magic trick ever. I am an evil wizard and I am about to perform my greatest magic trick ever. However, I need assistance. It's time for me to get my very own apprentice. So the evil wizard decided to get his very own apprentice. But from where? It wasn't like a parent was just going to hand over their kid to an evil wizard or anything. But then he got a brilliant idea. I have a brilliant idea of where I can get a new apprentice. I'll become a foster parent. So the evil wizard set off to the local child protective services office to see about becoming a foster parent.
Hello. I am a child protective worker. Hello? I want to become a foster parent. Okay. You wait here. I'll go get you a foster kid. So the child protective worker went off to get the evil wizard a foster kid. I wonder who that could be. Hello, I am a child protective worker. What do you want? Your kid. You are a terrible mother. I'm taking him to a foster home. Please don't take my baby. Too bad. Come along, boy. So the child protective services worker took the boy back to the evil wizard. Here is your new foster kid. Goodbye. Come along, boy. So the evil wizard took the kid back to his lair to start training him to be his new apprentice. Alright boy, if you are going to be my apprentice it's time you learn to do some magic. You know, magic. Hello, is there anybody in there? Oh my god, this kid is retarded. He is of no use to me. Come on boy, I'm taking you back. So the evil wizard took the kid back to the child protective worker. This boy is retarded. He is of no use to me. You'll have to take him somewhere else. Goodbye. So what do we do with you now? Meanwhile. Once upon a time there was a mad scientist who worked for the drug industry. He was on the verge of his greatest creation. I am on the verge of my greatest creation. I call it the happy pill. Now all I need is a human child test subject to try it out on. But where do I get a kid to try these? So the mad scientist decided it was time to test his new happy pill out on a human test subject. But wherever would he get a kid to try them? Suddenly, he had a brilliant idea. I have a brilliant idea. I know where I can get a kid. I'll become a foster parent. So the mad scientist went down to the local child protective services office to see about becoming a foster parent. Hello. I am a child protective worker. Hello. I want to be a foster parent. Great. I have a foster kid for you right here. Good. Come along, boy. So the mad scientist took the kid back to his lab to test his new pill. Good. Now I can test my latest invention out on a human test subject. Here, boy, take this. So the mad scientist gave the kid a handful of happy pills. There, boy. Now the final test of my latest invention completely revolves around your answer to the next question. How do you feel, boy? I said, how do you feel, boy? Hello? Oh no. My happy pill fried his brain. I guess I have no more use for him. Come on, boy. I'm bringing you back. So the mad scientist took the kid back to the child protective worker. This boy is damaged. I have no further use for him. You'll have to take him somewhere else. Goodbye. So what do we do with you now? Meanwhile, there was a little green alien who was flying around in his UFO, looking for somebody to give an anal probe to. I am a little green alien. I want to give somebody an anal probe. But wherever will I find somebody who I can give an anal probe to? Then the little green alien got a brilliant idea. I have a brilliant idea of where I can get somebody to give an anal probe to. I'll become a foster parent. So the little green alien went to the Child Protective Services office to see about becoming a foster parent. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. Hello, I want to be a foster parent. Great, I have a foster kid for you right here. Come along, boy. So the little green alien took the kid back to his UFO to give him an anal probe. Drop your pants, boy. I'm going to give you the best anal probe ever. So the little green alien gave the kid the best anal probe he had ever given in his life. This is unbelievable. I just gave that kid the best anal probe I had ever given to anybody, and he didn't even scream once. What kid no the kid doesn't scream when you give them an anal probe? I know, this kid is retarded. He is of no use to me. Come on boy, I'm bringing you back. So the little green alien took the kid back to the child protective worker. This kid doesn't even scream when you give him an anal probe. You'll have to take him back. Goodbye. Meanwhile, once upon a time there was a self-righteous, bleeding heart liberal, pot-smoking hippie chick who was desperate for money. I am a self-righteous, bleeding heart liberal, pot-smoking hippie chick who is desperate for money, but wherever can I get some cash man? So the self-righteous, bleeding heart liberal, pot-smoking hippie chick sat there for hours wondering how to get her hands on some cash. Then suddenly, she got a brilliant idea. I know where I can get some cash, I'll become a foster parent, and earn some good karma at the same time by helping one of those sweet innocent victims of child abuse or neglect.
So the self-righteous, bleeding heart liberal, pot-smoking hippie chick went down to the Child Protective Services office to see about becoming a foster parent. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. Hello, I want to become a foster parent. Great, here's a foster kid for you. When do I get paid? Next Tuesday. Cool, goodbye. Come along boy. So the self-righteous, bleeding heart liberal, pot-smoking hippie chick brought the kid home, which is where I just happened to come into the story. They're home at last. Excuse me, can you spare some change? Sorry buddy, I don't get paid till next Tuesday. Thanks anyway. This sort of thing went on until the kid turned 18 and aged out of the foster care system. He went on to join a gang, do drugs, and rob a bank where he murdered the teller. He was then arrested and thrown in jail for the rest of his life. I finally found my forever home. Parental rights. Freedom to raise up your sons and your daughters according to your conscience and convictions. In America, this has always been a privilege. But would you believe there are those who wish it were otherwise? This traditional parent-child relationship is currently under a shadow of political threat. Help preserve parental rights. Support the Constitutional Amendment. I want to thank you, the viewers, for watching this week. You can catch us the same time same channel next week. Until next week, my friends, remember, your, your voice, voice can, can make, make a the difference. difference.